what's up people this is vishal and i'm back again with another video in my last video i had a comment from sunny asking about an efficient way of polling which makes a really great topic for this one so we'll be talking about polling in this one but before we start i recently had my avatar created by an artist named parul goel i have left a link to her instagram id in the description you can reach out to her and get your avatar created as well now without wasting any further time let's get into the video so let's first understand what is polling so uh, let's imagine a scenario that where you are making a payment on a website now generally these transaction flows are long running background tasks so let's say i click on initiate payment and the backend is now running a background task to collect the payment during that time the uh, responsibility of the front end is to keep checking the status of the background task running at the back end by making an api call in fixed span of time so let's say 2 seconds so in every 2 seconds we'll be making an api call to the back end to check whether the transaction has been processed or failed or whatever right and this technique is called polling so i have just given you one scenario about the transaction but there can be many other scenarios where polling can be helpful so let's say i want to generate a very huge file on demand so when i'm which is uh, which can be a long running task right so when i click on generate file and the backend is busy generating that file for me during that time the front end's responsibility is again to poll the backend server check the status of the background running task if the task has succeeded return the response if the task has failed show an error message and what and what not right so there are many such scenarios where polling can be helpful so let's uh, jump into the code now and for this video we are going back to our sales js application this is the same sales js application that i wrote for my front end front end logging video so if you have not seen that yet you can click on the suggestion box and check it out now for our uh, polling scenario i've just added two new routes so one is slash polling which will be returning our html file and there is an api that i've created called slash request status which is a get api call and going to execute the get status function of my polling controller okay so inside the get status function um, i've written a self executing function over here to keep the poll count variable inside the uh, get status function context which is returning another function which i want uh, to be executed whenever the request comes for slash request status so the logic is very simple over here we are just uh, counting the poll count so for each request we are just incrementing the poll count and whenever the poll count reaches uh, reaches 5 we are just returning that the status is processed so this is just to mimic uh, a long running background task okay so uh, on my backend i'm just uh, incrementing the poll count based on the number of requests i get and whenever the request is uh, reaching 5 we are just returning the status as processed and for rest of the poll counts we are just returning the status as processing so to see this working uh, we will go to our postman and whenever uh, you can see that i'm making a request to http localhost 1337 slash request status this is where my uh, sales js application is running when i make a request you can see the status is processing poll count is zero then i continue making request for five times and once the poll count is five you can see that the status is processed so my api is working completely fine so this is what we want to do automatically on the front end so on the front end we'll be polling for uh, every fixed span of time for this video's purpose i am going to use 1 second as the time but in real time you might be doing 2 seconds as well but it totally depends on the use case so uh, for this video i am going to use 1 second and those requests will start triggering when i click on the fetch request status button that i have on my html okay so the i have a fetch status button which is going to start triggering the request now look let's look at the poll.js file which i have uh, already added to my html now this poll.js file is where we want to write our logic for doing the polling okay so i have already uh, referenced the fetch status button over here i have added a click event listener on that and on executing this callback we are doing some things so the first two statements on this callback is specifically for front end logging so if you have not checked that video yet i have uh, again added the video in the suggestion box go check it out it's really interesting and you should always implement front end logging on your websites so we will skip these two things uh let's see the rest of the stuff so 
on the button when you click on the button i'm just uh, changing the text to processing i'm adding the attribute disabled so that we don't cater more uh, uh, clicks from the user and here is where we are making a call uh, to fetch the status we have we are yet to implement the polling logic over here we'll come back to this whenever i have the response we'll log the response if the response dot status is processed that time i'm gonna uh, reset my button state to show fetch request status and i'll remove the attribute disabled so that basically it resets to the original state and we can trigger the uh, events again all right so that's all is that that is happening on the uh, poll.js file and if you go to the browser hit a refresh this is what you'll see so right now on this thing we are seeing an error where we don't know what is response.status right so for obvious reasons this is failing so we will go ahead and now implement the fetch status function in the fetch status function uh, where, where we are calling we have clearly written that we are expecting a promise over here so the fetch status is going to return a promise okay so in the promise callback i'm only going to talk about a resolve scenario so i'm just going to take resolve as the uh, argument so inside my promise i'm going to create a self executing function uh, you will see why i'm using a self executing function over here soon so we are going to use a async function and we will call it request status okay and since this is going to be a self executing function i need to call it immediately now um, inside this self executing function we need to make the api calls right so we will be writing const response equal to const response equal to let me keep my trackpad away all right so const uh, response equal to we will write await fetch so you know that i have already created a api called slash request status and they both are on the same server so i can just write it as slash request status okay so um the re this is the reason why i created a sync function because we are making an api call and using a wait inside now once the response is back we are going to extract data out of it by doing await response dot json okay so once i have the data i know that i'm returning either processing or processed so um we will be putting a switch case over here uh, on data dot status so the this is how i know it that we will have status okay so if if data dot status is is processing that's one case if our data dot status is processed and there is another one which is default okay so right now on this on my application i have only two states but you can have as many states as possible and your application can take decisions based on whatever states you like okay so i'm going to move the process state up so that because processing and default i'm going to write the same logic right so for processed it's quite straightforward so once the status is processed i'm going to resolve my promise with the data that i got from the backend and of course i need to put a break over here now when the status is processing or any other thing uh, other than processed we are going to set a timeout okay so we are setting a timeout of uh, like i was saying we will put a timeout of 1 second okay and inside this i'm going to recursively call my request status function okay so we'll call request status function and i think that should do my polling logic okay so let's quickly look run through this thing so we are making a fetch call to slash request status and uh, while the data is not processed we are setting a timeout of 1 second and making a call again okay so after every 1 second we will be making a call to slash request again until we receive the status as processed okay so let's uh, see this in action we go back to our browser go back to our website hit a refresh and on the network tab let's click on this so you can see that the requests are going on every 1 second and you can see the response 
so status is processing then status is processing poll count is one and so on until the poll count is five and the status is processed so once we have received the status as processed we are moving out of this thing so because we have uh, received the status processed there is no pending timeout remaining we are already resolving the data so after i resolve the data i am logging it logging the response on the console so let's go to the console and you can see that my data is present over here with poll count equal to 5 and status equal to processed okay so this is uh, the very basic scenario where um, i'm just having two state uh, two statuses and i'm polling the uh, request status api to get the status of my background running task so there is another thing that we can do in this uh, logic is uh, to put a timer on how long we will poll so let's say there is a very long running task at the back end and unfortunately it is taking more time than expected so that time i would not continue polling and uh, keep the user waiting uh, i would rather uh, discontinue the polling and tell the user that there is something wrong uh, please try again later right so to do that we need to check when did the polling start and um, and we have to keep checking on each request that we make after one second how much time has elapsed since the time we started the polling okay so i'm going to update my request status function and uh, just uh, add a argument over here which is start time and by default this is going to be date dot now okay so what i'm essentially doing here is if i'm calling the request status function without any parameters it is going to by default take the current uh, date and time so which is exactly the scenario that is happening over here i'm calling this function without any parameters so the when when the first call happens for request status it will uh, take the start time as uh, the current date time now before i start my polling i will put a condition which will say date dot date dot uh, now minus the start time is if the start if this delta is greater than let's say two minutes so for two minutes it will be two into 60 into thousand okay so this would be the thing so you can either leave it like this or let's just make it easier we'll just write it here so if the delta is greater than two minutes if i have not received the response in two minutes i am going to stop the polling so to stop the polling i'll simply resolve and we will return the status as uh, undetermined uh, and the message would be unusual long run something okay so this is what i'm going to resolve and we will return from here all right so this is what i'm expecting to happen so this is uh what this is another additional layer which is just saying that if the polling has happened for more than two minutes and i have not received the process status yet um, that time we will just stop the polling we will inform the user that there is something wrong and we will let we will not disappoint the user by making them wait on the screen so this is how i would be implementing the polling logic many people would uh, probably think that uh, when we are talking about polling we should use set interval so i've written that as well so you can use set interval as well and the logic would uh, look somewhat like this so according to me i think if i'm using interval i have to make sure that i clear the interval properly if i miss clearing the interval we, i might end up making a lot of api calls unnecessary api calls on the fraud servers and uh, whatnot right and another um, uh, thing which i didn't like is i'll have to wait for thousand milliseconds for my first api call to happen now uh, i'm i'm kind of okay with it i don't have any problem with thousand milliseconds but let's imagine a scenario if i want to uh, do the polling on every five seconds so for the five seconds we are just doing not doing anything right uh, in this scenario of course there are workarounds but i think they would lead to duplication of the code that we are doing over here 
or calling the if we move it inside a function would be calling that function twice right so that's why i don't really like the approach of set interval whereas on this thing this scenario we are just using set timeout and there is no such scenario additional scenarios that i need to take care of i do not need to clear the timeout because uh, we are just executing one one uh, a request at a time and then we are just checking whether that request is giving me the desired status or not and only then we are proceeding to see whether we want to execute another set timeout or not so this is more controlled and uh, more easier to understand as well all right so that's all for this one guys if you have any questions about polling just drop a comment in the comment section let me know your thoughts about uh, what you think about this approach that i'm using and like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more such uh, videos in the future and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified about my videos whenever i upload them so see you in the next one bye